to another episode of Spotlight. We are so excited today to have Euler with us. Tell us a little bit about uh, your mission and why you wanted to uh, have this fund and your journey through uh, through the investment world. Yeah, so my my mission has, has always been how do you um, drive capital to parts of the world that um, are underserved. Uh, Africa is one of the most underserved areas uh, where there's just a lack of capital and that's had um, some intended and unintended consequences. And so how can we leverage innovation and everything that's going on elsewhere, the, the growing interest in the venture asset class uh, to invest in businesses that have the potential to um, scale and as they scale, employ people and pay those people uh, fair wages so that they uh, can then provide for their own basic needs, uh, take care of their family, uh, take care of healthcare expenses, put food on the table, send their kids to school. All the things we we uh, you know take for granted sometimes uh, in our lives um, that are uh, not a uh, given for a lot of people around the world. So that's really what uh, led me to start Invested World, and uh, and yeah, that is an amazing initiative. So, what was your journey like? What was the biggest challenge that you've encountered, and how did you overcome it? Yeah, uh, I think investing in Africa is not for the faint of heart, and most people have never really considered it. Um, a lot of people also haven't really thought critically about investing in um, directly in venture funds. And so a lot of the work was on educating investors. One, one coming to the realization and understanding that institutional investors were not going to invest in a first-time fund manager, um, and that families and individuals who were likely to invest in us uh, would need um, a lot from us to be able to, to make that commitment to investing in the fund. And so it's patience, uh, spending the time to help bring people along um, with what you're seeing and helping them understand um, what you hope to achieve. Um, and yeah, and I think it's just coming to the realization that a lot of it is based on personal relationships, no matter how strong your strategy is, people are investing in you. They're taking a, a bet first and foremost on, on you and they have to believe in you and the team um, that is planning on investing their capital. Uh, and so, you know, stepping back and, and looking at things from that perspective and, and trying to think through what are the things I need to, to show those investors to get them to have a higher level of confidence in, in our ability to, to manage our money and find good investments. That was probably the hardest. So what would be an advice that you would give to your younger self when you were just starting out a vested world? Yeah, I think it would, it would be, um, and I, I still am working on this now, but how do you get um, to a relatively quick yes or no answer? Because you spend a lot of time talking to investors who it may not be a good fit for, um, for whatever reason. Um, it's not personal in many cases. Uh, and so getting getting to a relatively quick uh, yes or no answer, um, not taking it personally when someone says no, because it's, you know, it's not a reflection on on you. Um, and continuing to just be be patient. You're gonna hear a lot of no's. I remember the first, one of the worst no's I heard, I like left and like, was like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I really, really had an existential crisis when I left that meeting. And, 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 that's thinking that I, I, everything I was doing was wrong, but you know that was uh, fleeting, and and thankfully I, I stayed the course, and so it's just it's um, telling myself to be patient and, and stay the course and don't get discouraged too easily. What are great ways that you use in order to scout for these innovative startups that are really targeting these kinds of emerging markets? How are you looking for them? Yeah, so we're we're we decided to focus on a, a few countries. Uh, and a few sectors to really narrow the scope of what we're looking at. So those countries are Kenya, Nigeria, and Ghana are the primary countries we look at. And then there's a few countries in, in East Africa, like Tanzania, Rwanda, Uganda, and Ethiopia that we'll also look at. And then from a sector standpoint, we're looking at uh, the agribusiness sector, consumer products and services, and enabling technology. So how is a business leveraging tech uh, to either increase efficiency or scalability of, of what they're doing? Um, so those are some of the things that we use to just narrow the, the scope down a little bit to make it a little more manageable um, as, we, as we consider deals. And what kind of trends do you see in emerging markets these days? Because there could be a huge range, but especially post-COVID, what is it that you're seeing? 
Yeah, it's a lot of things. There's one. There's growing interest in um, the con the countries and on the continent generally where we invest. Um, a huge amount of interest in the role that fintech can play in helping bring people that are you know outside the financial system into it. Um, ways that you can increase efficiency in logistics, um, in e-commerce. Um, just generally, people are, are looking at ways that you can use technology and what's happened elsewhere uh, to allow these countries to leapfrog the traditional ways of doing things. Um, we've obviously seen it with in the telecom industry. Most countries where we invest never really had a fully built out LAN telephone network, and they were able to skip um, that technology and, and move uh, essentially to mobile phones as a primary source of, of, of communications. Uh, you're seeing it uh, in financial and with, with fintech companies and financial services leveraging tech a lot more to expand the, the distribution of, of, of the products and services that they offer. Uh, you're seeing it in, um, in energy, uh, a lot of use of renewable energy. In fact, a lot of the countries we invest in um, get more power from renewable sources than elsewhere around the world. Uh, so they're really at the forefront of, of using renewables as a primary source of, of energy generation and then also distributed grids. Um, yeah, so those are just some of the ways where uh, some of the areas where we think people are really interested in, in trying to explore how can you invest to, to further some of these trends down the road. That is great. Any, any way you can leapfrog traditional ways of doing things. I have been somebody who has had the opportunity to see that leapfrogging um, process in various uh, countries in Asia, where they had these like super nice cell phones and yet like no landline that exists, but yeah. they had a cell phone nicer than mine, which is great. And, um, and it was just so interesting to see, cause you're right, like building certain kinds of infrastructure was just too expensive. So having this kind of leapfrogging uh, mentality was really the right way to go. What do you think might be the next leapfrogging trend? Which industry do you think would be the next biggest boom? Well, it's certainly, you know, people are paying a lot of attention to healthcare and education, um, both areas are under-resourced and there's a huge need uh, on both ends. And so on the healthcare side, you look at a lot of the countries where we invest, uh, the number of doctors per capita uh, pales in comparison to where you, what you see in other country and countries. And it's really, it's gonna be really difficult to train the amount of doctors you need in order to address, um, you know, some of the, the chronic illnesses that these places are currently facing and will face in the future. And so how do you expand access to healthcare without necessarily needing to increase the number of doctors and nurses that you have um, providing that care. So that's one area where I think there's gonna be a, a lot of innovation. Um, similarly with education, there's, <laughs> this is the, Africa is the youngest continent in the world. Um, so how do you educate all these people and, and make them uh, equipment with the tools that they need to be um, really you know, productive uh, citizens that are contributing towards, you know, the continued development of those countries. And as economies develop, you know, education level tends to, tends to rise. And again, we're not going to be able to train enough teachers um, to provide uh, the education we need to the amount of people that we need to provide it to. So how do you leverage some of the, the digital tools that we have um, to make um, that process a little more scalable uh, while not um, sacrificing on quality of the content that you're providing. So I think those are two, two areas that, you know, are, are going to be big. And then, you know, the most basic of, of, of needs is people need to eat. And a lot of these countries are still um, not, uh, you know, self-sufficient from an agricultural standpoint, yet there's so much knowledge that's been accumulated over the years and technologies that have been developed to really increase the efficiency of and, and the, our ability to grow grow food. And so to what extent can you leverage some of that uh, in these countries to help uh, increase productivity levels and make these countries uh, more productive from an from a agricultural output standpoint? Okay, great. And, um, and so in terms of talking more about the emerging, um, the emerging market, of course, you know, in, in investing in emerging markets do lead to great impact. So how are you as an investor measuring what kind of impact it is creating in terms of your investments? I've always said it's, it's not really rocket science, <laughs> how, how much impact you're having. It's 
So from an impact standpoint, there's a few things that are really critical for us. One, we want to invest in companies, as I said earlier, that uh, have the ability to, to grow and scale. Uh, as they scale, we want them to employ more people. Uh, and as they employ more people, we want them to pay those people fair wages relative to the average wage in, the, in that country. And so it's really easy to, to look at how many people com companies employing and see what the wages are and compare that to the, the national average. Um, there are things that we will not invest in. Uh, so we don't invest in uh, extractive industries. We don't invest in uh, companies that are leveraging forced labor or child labor in any way. We don't invest in companies that are um, you know, making firearms, weapons, or tobacco products. We just, that's not things that we're interested in. Um, but we will invest in alcohol, <laughs> um, which there, some may find a contradiction there, but um, we, we, don't, we don't see it the same way. Um, and then there are certain UN sustainable development goals that we're trying to contribute towards. Um, and so we will measure uh, our, our performance against some of those uh, SDGs. And as you know, there's, there's a ton of SDGs that you can, you can work on. Um, and so we just, we try to find ones that we think are aligned with our investment strategy and, and try to highlight the, the ways that those companies are, are addressing, um, those goals. Awesome. That is great. And so we want to get to know you a little bit more. So I asked you to take out two pieces of paper. Do you have that? Okay. Paper. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, so I want you to write one thing that is true about yourself and one thing that is a lie for our game, truth and a lie. So I'll give you a moment to do that. So here are mine. So this one is, I lived in Montreal for 10 years and in Chicago for one year. And then here is, I was the only child in my family to go to preschool. So which one do you think is true and which one do you think is a lie? I think you were the only child in your family to go to preschool. You think this one is true? Yes. Yes, you're right. Good job. <laughs> How did you know? How did you get so quickly? I think we talked and you've never, you didn't, you didn't say anything about being in Chicago. <laughs> I have never lived in Chicago. Yes. I've only visited once for the heart yeah. conference. So you, you would have, you would have said if you lived in Chicago, I think. Yeah. You I would hope. have gotten it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. So let's get to know you a bit. Uh, can you show me yours and hold it up to the camera? All right. I, so I'll hold it one at a time so you yes, can see it. That would be great. I was late to a meeting with the president, Jimmy Carter because I overslept. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, I got to sing a song with John Legend. Oh wow, all of these are so impressive. Well, I think, I think that you got to sing a song with John Legend. Is that true? That's a lie. Oh! <laughs> yeah. oh man, so what happened with Jimmy Carter? What, what, what did you do? Oh, we, um, when, when I was in college, the uh, student leaders got to have dinner with President Carter. Uh, he was very involved with, with Emory uh, and the Carter Center is uh, affiliated with the university. And I had track practice and I had like an hour between track practice and dinner. I was like, oh, I'm going to take like a 30 minute lap, nap. I was really tired and I woke up like an hour later. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, did you still go? or what, what? I, I, I still went. I was late. We had a great, great chat um probably half half as much time as i would have otherwise gotten to spend with him which was my bad and disappointment but still got to to chat with him and he amazing man well that's a one way to stand out that's true <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure in a good way <laughs> yeah right well thank you so much for um coming on to this interview it was so great to have you and lastly we want you to share an initiative or a startup or an investment something that you're very excited about yeah excited i'm really excited about the work that um, um black B bc is doing uh to expand access to uh the venture uh, ecosystem and industry to underrepresented uh, groups um so yeah i would encourage everyone to, to check out the work that they're doing and support it however they can Fantastic. And thank you so much for sharing. We're going to share the link in the description below you guys. And uh, how is, um, what is the best way for startups to get in touch with you? Yeah, I think the preferred way is always through a mutual contact, but if that isn't the case, um, I'm on LinkedIn uh, and my email is euler at bestofworld.com. 
All right, so thank you so much for, for coming on to our show. Um, once again, it was so awesome to have you and for you to share your insights with us. No, thank you. Thanks for having me and thanks for doing this. Thanks, have a good one.